Hi, I'm Eddie uh, from Chopped. I'm going to show you today how to make gravel axe from the very beginning right the way through to doing the salad on Christmas morning. So first of all, you need the best salmon you can possibly get. Fortunately, that's exactly what we have. We have, we buy all our salmon, have only ever bought our salmon from Foreman's in the East End of London. They buy the best salmon you can get. Um, this is Scottish sea farm salmon. It's called sea farm because it's farmed out to sea, which means it's out in the wild, effectively in the wild, although in huge pens. The great thing about this salmon is two days ago, this was swimming around in the North Atlantic. Um, it is, it's like, basically it's a premium quality fish and you should handle it with great respect. So what I do is, first of all, we want to take off the belly part. This is a bit of waste, so that comes off. Take that off, and then we want to prepare it for. Whoops! Turn the board round. There we go. We want to prepare it for the gravel axe. So really, with the gravel axe, we want it roughly the same depth of fish all the way through. So we take this belly bit off. Which we'll do later, and then we want to take the end bit off. The end bit really isn't any good, the tail edge of it isn't any good. So what you do is you just run your knife along the skin and take this off. Now this piece here, you can use for making fish cakes, anything else, but don't whatever you do waste it. Okay, so you just take that off. We need that little tail bit to help us. And this piece can show you how to skin salmon it's essentially the same, but we don't want to skin it here because we're using that for gravel axe. So what you do is you put your knife down so it's not actually cutting the skin. And what I do is hold that and then you just really run your knife along. But what you can see with my thumb, I'm holding the fish back so you're actually cutting against. You're taking all the skin off but leaving all the flesh on. Obviously you don't want to leave flesh and that again, you can use fish cakes or stir fry or soup. And that. Perfectly good, you don't want to waste it. So, anyway, that's the first stage. So, I'll just show you in a second how to make the cure for that. So, once, once we've prepared the salmon, you're going to need a lot of cling film for this. So, underneath, I've got cling film, and then I put it on the fish paper. This is like a, like a grease proof paper. You really want to try and insulate the fish from cling film. Cling film and fish don't mix. So, the mixture is going to be sea salt, demerara sugar and dill. Obviously use the best sea salt you can find. I always use molded, lovely proper salt. So what you want is roughly 25 grams for every uh, 250 grams of fish. And then you want equal quantities of salt and sugar. It's demerara sugar I use because it just gives it a slightly more nuttier flavour. In with the dill is just to flavour it. And just mix that together. Just mix it all together and then you want to pour it evenly over your fish. One little tip, try not to put so much at the end because that's thinner than at this bit where it's fatter. And then just gently Smooth it out. This little tail flap I like to put over like that because you can use that for carving later on. And then you're essentially wrapping up a parcel. But as I said, don't try not to get the cling film touching the fish. And that cling film comes over there. And what you want to do is make a parcel because all this juice the curing liquid will be drawn out by the salt and sugar. So you want to try and make it completely airtight. So one last bit of cling film. I can get that done easy. Put that there. Over the top. Quite, there we go. Now what you want to do is put that on a tray, because it might leak the bottom of your fridge 
and then put some heavy weights, like cans or something like that, on top and leave that in the fridge for 48 hours. Don't touch it, just leave it. The salt and the sugar will cure it, the dill will give it some flavour.